And the capital, capital gains, gains tax. tax the, okay. the, the small business part of the tax that would fall on many right. of the people over. We've got about seven minutes left, so let, I, I need to get a better feeling on what's going to happen in the future. You talked about stagflation. I'm worried that we have so much debt that the Federal Reserve looks at this and says, wait a second, if interest rates go up, we're going to take almost 100% of what we take in our budget is going to be spent for servicing the debt. We have now a real responsibility to keep interest rates low for ourselves because the country is, is one of the biggest borrowers. You said we're at the highest rate of borrowing uh, since World War II. So doesn't the Fed want to keep the interest rate down really, not so much for the consumers, but because as the economy starts to heat up, the country, the, the nation is going to be in trouble, the government. Certainly it benefits the government to, to have interest rates uh, lower, there's no doubt. And, and if it's a longer term interest rate, that's even better. But I, I think the, the primary impetus here is to try to, uh, try to keep asset markets, commercial real estate, uh, the stock markets, keep them sound and, and from, uh, from, especially in the commercial real estate market, from plummeting even further because then you would see a lot more bank failures, you'd have a lot more challenges in the next two years. So I don't see it necessarily as an intentional play to fund the federal government. Oh, but I'm, I'm worried that when, when interest rates start going up, that all of our money is going to be used for servicing the debt. I'm talking governmental money, that government our tax revenues, revenues will that, be used. That's a real risk. And, and one of the dilemmas, and Milton Friedman was one of the first to make this argument, is that, one of the, that there's two things you really can't do with monetary policy and that's control interest rates in the long run and keep the unemployment rate at a level below the natural rate. And this is the downside to the inflation in there is bond markets mm -hmm. and investors in bonds can protect themselves from inflation only by adding an inflation premium on to the bond rates. So one of the real risks that the Fed would run if they bowed a political pressure to try to keep interest rates low to service the debt is that the minute bond participants see that as inflationary, that will, that will drive bond yeah, prices an up. Point. And I think we saw a little bit of that when they first started the QE2. Hmm. The bond markets, which they were anticipating longer bonds. Give me the quick bonds. definition, and gentlemen, quick, yes, quick, quick definition, QE2, quantitative easing to if you were telling your granddaughter who's three years old what it is, you'd say what? Quantitative easing too is a new tool of the Federal Reserve where they're trying to buy long-term securities to try to keep long-term interest rates low. And it's a relatively new tool or approach to monetary policy. And my answer is no. It possibly helps stabilize, but it's not going to stimulate. It's not a long-term solution. I don't see a lot of stimulus coming out of it, but it, it is very effective and I think has been effective and will be effective in, in the short term of trying to keep, uh, keep the bottom in place so we don't right. go Talk further Talk to me now. about things that affect my life. Do I, are, have we hit the bottom on interest rates? How much lower can it go and when does it start kicking up? I think we've hit the bottom on long-term rates. I don't see them going any lower. I, do, I would agree. I don't see them going any lower. In fact, there's much more risk right. on upside, right, things like both housing, with recovery. Things like housing prices. All right, so now's the time to refinance. Now's the time to buy a house unless high housing prices are going are to take another dive. Might they? Well, QE2 is trying to, is trying to provide some stimulus in, by bond, in the bond market to prevent that. And they might. They might drop down another 5 10 percent, but it's very market-centric, so it depends upon where you are. And I guess yeah. I've got a slightly different view. I think we truly did have a housing bubble, and if you had a housing bubble, prices were excessively too high, and I think some of what has prolonged this recession and retarded recovery is that instead of allowing the housing market to find its correct level, we've done too many steps to try to prop up housing artificially, which has really slowed up moving the housing stock from where it's overpriced to where it's properly priced so, and whether it's a shift from owner occupied to rental or other types and, of and things. I, and I see and it as a matter of, it's, it's a rate of change. So of what change. they're trying to do is slow down the process because I don't think ultimately they can But But in, in essence, you got, both of you guys think housing prices are going to take a drop. I, I 
Yeah. Maybe, I don't, maybe I don't, not. I, I, uh, what, was, what was it that Mark Twain said? You could take all, all the, the economists, economists in the world, put them end to end, and you still wouldn't get to a point. And I think that's going to be region by region. Yep. All right. Talk, to Talk to me about neighborhood by neighborhood. Talk to me about inflation. Why is it that gold is at an all-time high? That's a sign of the inflation. <laughs> the sign of the worry that people you know, that, are worried that, that, that inflation is coming. As you put money coming. in the... You know, money are, in the system, they, and you're seeing an awful lot of people buying gold, buying commodities, other are, types of things, is that a, and that's a price going up. Is that a fair up. worry? I mean, is it a good investment? At, 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 well, at $1,300 an ounce, would you suggest people buy more? Not tomorrow. Not tomorrow. <laughs> but I, I do think that having a certain amount of one's portfolio in gold makes, you know, when there, does there's some inflation to hit. we got a minute left. Help me. Give me, a, give me a date. Here, you're the economist. Help me out. When does the inflation hit? I would, and does it hit? Well, if if it hits, it'll hit two to three years down the road. Will it hit? Can't I can't, can't answer. answer? I wish I could. You know, I wish. Right, I let's could. bring it over here. I, I would tend to go with that. We're seeing it 18 months to two years out. There's a lag in there, and I am probably with John Taylor and others. I am on Thomas Honig's side here. That I'm very very pessimistic that the Fed will be able to unwind what they've already done in a timely manner as the economy starts. That yeah. So you that think can, inflation is much more so, likely? So I think inflation is... Are we going to see this, the good old-fashioned stagflation that wasn't ever well, supposed I, to happen? And I, I do think well, that's if we see inflation, we'll definitely see, see stagflation. stagflation. There's I, no I, doubt I about that. Oh, I'm looking forward to the good times. Oh, You'll well, find me in the bunker. Right. Well, John, that, thank you. i got to run, Tom. Thank you. Yeah, I've got to yeah. run. Well, that cleared it up completely, didn't it? Yeah. <laughs> more you know, the more questions you have. Listen for me late nights on 850 KOA. Look for us at independenceinstitute.org. Tell a friend. We'll see you next week.